So our, our third speaker today is, has come from Canada, and that is uh, John Visaisuk from uh, from Tyrama. Now, uh, uh, th 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 now John's company is in the devulcanization sector, and uh, he's uh, when, when I talked earlier about uh, uh, you know crossover t topics, uh, John's company is of course in the in the tower recycling sector, but he's going to talk about uh, today about uh, uh, moving towards tire to tire recycling, reality of circular retreading, and he's going to talk about the application of his his company's devulcanization process into a circular retreading concept. John. Thanks very much, David. Really appreciate it. All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me today. Thanks, David, for organizing this. Um, so, you know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of this stuff in the last presentation is actually quite relevant to, to our technology as well, to devulcanization. And I think it shows that, um, you know, despite whatever type of technology it is, the recycling sector in general uh, really, needs its, really needs our support right now. And so today, I'd like to talk to you about the future of tire recycling and retreading. Um, for us, that means tire to tire recycling um, through our concept of circular retreading. Now, what I call circular retreading, basically using the retread buffing dust or the retread waste as feedstock for pre cure and mold cure retreads. And we do this through our process called devulcanization. And so, really, in this method, we're taking the retread buffing, the retread waste, and turning it right back into um, new retread material. And so um, I'm gonna describe the steps to go through this. Um, it's actually, it's quite straightforward in the sense that um, we don't change anything of the first, uh, the first step of retreading. So you look at standard truck, bus, OTR retreading, um, the tires are buffed down, uh, meaning the old tread is removed from the tire for the most part. And so a new tread can be, can be glued on or, uh, or molded on. But we really use this buffing dust as our feedstock. Now, I'd like to make it clear that the devulcanization technology works with a large, uh, with a large amount of feedstocks. Um, basically, any material that's been cured with sulfur, we have the potential to devulcanize. But for this particular presentation, we're talking about retread buffing um, and, again, circular retreading. So step two is really, is really the devulcanization step. So after you have this, uh, this retread buffing waste, uh, it goes through our clean process of devulcanization. So basically we're using a twin screw extruder. It's a thermomechanic reaction. We actually do not use any chemicals at all. And so it's just the retread buffing waste that goes into the machine. And it's this, uh, we call it tire derived polymer or TDP that comes out. Again, there's no chemicals used in our process. Um, there's no additives. Now, this is a really old video. This is a 10-year-old video. You can see the crumb rubber falling into the extruder uh, in the middle there. I like to use this video because it, it really shows the simplicity of the technology. Like, that was the crumb rubber going in, and this is the devulcanized rubber coming out. And that's the whole manufacturing process right there. It's a really simple process. Now, since here, this was about 10 years ago, since then, um, we've really developed a lot of uh, downstream processing, like automatic packaging, metal detection, um, weighing and cutting. But the actual devulcanization process, that was it. The crumb rubber goes in, it's a thermal mechanic reaction, and this devulcanized rubber is what comes out. Now, step three, once we have this devulcanized rubber, what do we do with it? Well, we take it and we mix it into a rubber compound. Um, and so this could be a mold cure, this could be a, a pre-cure tread. Um, it's also important to note that our material, because it comes from basically the retreaded tires, um, it inherently contains about 26, 27% recycled carbon black. So while we talk about our material being recycled rubber, it's really a recycled rubber compound that contains natural rubber, synthetic rubber, and carbon black. And so again, just using our material, carbon black as a filler, it's really not, it's really the vulcanized rubber that gets in the way of reusing that carbon black. And so by devulcanizing the rubber, it makes it a lot easier to mix in. And so again, our material is inherently about 26 or 27% recovered carbon black. Now from there, we mix it into a retread compound. Again, this could be a pre-cured compound, this could be a mold cure. In this case here in this picture, this is a mold cure compound. And so in terms of the addition level, we look to add maybe 10, 20, 
or even 30% recycled content into a new retread. And it really depends on the application, um, but still that's, that's the potential here, is using 10, 20, or even 30% recycled content in a quality retread that meets the industry standards. And so for the application of it, this is for mold curing. Um, and so this was actually the first, the first big application that our TDP was used in, um, in Canada. And so there's a big company called Caltire. They do a lot of mining services. Um, they've been a partner of ours and they've been using this, um, this OTR retread compound for about, well, about six years now. And so they started uh, with 18%, using 18% recycled content. And just this year, they were actually able to increase the recipe to 25% recycled content. So these tires that you see here, these are newly retreaded OTR tires with 25% recycled content in them. And the recycled content is the rubber, uh, the rubber compound, basically the rubber and carbon black mixture. Now we're doing the same thing for, um, for pre-cured tread. I'd say the development is maybe just a little bit behind it because this is just starting to come out now. Um, but these are basically, it's, it's, the, exact same, uh, it's the exact same method and, and, um, and process. So basically you're, you're making this pre-cured this pre compound. Again, um, 20, 10, 20, 30% recycled compound. But for this application for a pre-cured uh, truck tire tread, um, we're looking at more at that 15% range is probably right now more the optimal level. As the tires get larger, um, we seem to be able to add a little bit more recycled content into it. But for a truck, uh, a pre-cured truck tread, you know, we should be targeting 15% recycled rubber uh, compound um, right now because this is what this is basically what we've been doing the last few years. Um, again, I think. I think a lot of the comments that Christoph made in the last presentation um, make a lot of sense because us too, we have been working very closely the last few years in quality control, controlling the feedstock, um, opening up the market. So again, these, these concepts are not just related to our technology, but to the tire recycling industry in general. Um, and I think, of course, you know, events like this are great to bring more attention to it and to bring the right minds together. Now again, this is something that we've been doing in Canada um, since about 2016. And so we can say now over about, about 15,000 OTR retreads have been made with this, uh, with this compound with 20% um, recycled material in it. So this is something, again, we've quietly been doing this in Canada, but it's been ongoing for about the past six, seven years now. And so again, we've passed about 15,000 OTR retreads um, with about 20% recycled material content. So a little bit more about this tire-derived polymer. So again, it can really be made from, from basically any rubber material that's been cured with sulfur. So our most standard is retread buffing. We started with retread buffing because it's very finite. The truck TBR retread buffing specifically, very finite in terms of the composition. It's pretty standard whether you look at the truck tire composition of Europe to North America, even to Asia, they're relatively similar. So we liked retread buffing because it gave us a very uh, narrow range to start with. From there, uh, we've really standardized whole truck tires. So we have a whole truck tire product. Um, we can also do a whole passenger tire product, but um, it's a little bit lower quality. So right now, our main sources of feedstock will be one, the retread buffing dust, two, end of life whole truck tires, and three, end of life OTR and giant mining tires. Those are actually incredibly, um, very, very lots of, um, <laughs> very lots, great amount of recycled rubber in, the, in those uh, big tires potentially. But we can also do factory scrap, we can do factory reject tires. Um, the technology has the potential to devulcanize other synthetic materials like EPDM. Um, but again, right now we're really focusing um, on, on, the, on the retreading. And this is actually, again, the longest standing application um, that we've been into. Now, as Christoph was mentioning earlier, it is very important to control the feedstock to be able to supply the tire industry and the tier one manufacturers. You really need to have your QA and QC in order. So, you know, we have ISO 9001, the 2015, the ISO 14001, um, and these are really just the start. Now, benefits of using tire-derived polymer, well, we think it really significantly reduces the, the CO2 um, impact or footprint. So if you, use, if you make TDP instead of making a new tire compound, you will 
save about 90% of the energy. The devulcanization process is quite simple, as you guys saw. Um, it doesn't have chemicals added, no additives. Um, and the energy efficient process uses about 300 uh, kilowatt hours per metric ton produced. Now, TDP can be you know, basically always sold at a discount compared to uh, natural rubber or carbon black or something like that. So um, it definitely will, will reduce costs. Uh, we like it because we prefer to produce this locally. So the whole point of our technology is to, is to license the technology and get it out there to where it's needed. So if we need this in Italy, we want to put a facility in Italy. If we need this in Australia, we want to put a facility in Australia. The point is to use local material and have a local source. You can use those local tires um, as a basically as a local source of rubber. And so in places like the United States and Europe where we do not grow rubber, we can still have a source that is you know, largely natural rubber uh, coming from these end of life tires. And as I said, this TDP is actually currently already being used um, in these applications. So it is being used in new passenger tires right now, um, is being used in retreaded truck tires, that's pre-cured. Um, it is being used in OTR retreads um, as mold cure. And it's actually also being used in, in some conveyor belt applications. Um, and so it's really a versatile material. Um, it has a lot of potential in it. And um, you know, right now we're just trying to get the word out and let people know that this is possible. Now beyond just regular tires and retreading, um, just as a quick thing to show, um, the material can be made you know, into a lot of different parts. So these are example parts that are made with 100% recycled material. Um, these ones up here are made out of whole truck tires. Um, so again, the, the material has a lot of potential. Um, these are some more products made um, with portions of TDP being used. And so again, we really think it's a, it's a versatile material, but in, in this case, retreading is really where um, we think we can make a, the biggest difference um, quickly. And so just a little bit about Tire Mer Inc. Um, as as uh, David said, we're a Canadian company, so we're founded um, outside of Toronto, so in Waterloo, Ontario, about an hour west of Toronto. Uh, we are a licensing company, so we want to license the technology. We don't want to be setting up and running all these facilities ourselves. We want to be capitalizing on the strengths of partners um, and being able to, to keep on our own technical expertise. We're really a technology company. So we like to continue to develop the technology, find ways to increase the properties, find ways to make the process more stable. Right now we have two facilities in Canada. We have a facility in Arnhem in the Netherlands. Um, there's a facility coming to Chennai, India next year. Uh, early, early next year, and there's a, there's a few more in the planning stages, so hopefully we have something else um, in the United States and an additional one in Europe um, coming soon. You know, in, in, in this, uh, for this audience, I thought it was important to, to kind of mention what can people do um, to help right now? And again, you know, again, I think a lot of the points Christoph made were, were really spot on um, in terms of the support that we're looking for. And so, you know, for individuals, we want the consumers to start requesting recycled material from the, from the tire manufacturers. That will eventually start to change the way that they, that, that they work. If their customers are demanding it, then eventually they, they will change. So that's something that can happen. So individuals, consumers can do this. If you're a fleet manager, um, that, that's a perfect job. <laughs> that's a perfect thing for you to be able to, to, to root for. You know, we think local jurisdictions can promote recycling more um, via grants, startup programs, direct subsidies, um, you know, things like that. Large scale government, and we think this is coming here in, in Europe relatively soon. Um, there will be legislation, I'm sure, for using more recycled rubber in products like tires and retreads. Um, as soon as it becomes basically uh, doable in the market, which it is now, so as soon as the market um, the market supply is there, we believe this will be coming. So in the next few years, we expect uh, there to be recycled rubber mandates coming um, in multiple jurisdictions. Um, I like to use a, an example of the Renewable Fuels Act in the United States. It was actually one single state of Minnesota that started the Renewable Fuels Act. All the big companies for GM, they said they couldn't do it, but they passed it anyways. And now basically, 
15% of all the gas you buy in the US or North America is like ethanol or, or um, kind of the, the recycled, the green material. So um, it is definitely a kind of a path that we can follow there. And private industry, we really want to accelerate the development. I think that the potential and the proof of concept has, has basically been proven. And so now we're looking to basically create this uh, supply um, where we can actually supply the tire industry in large levels. And so we want to accelerate recycled rubber uh, compound development um, and in terms of usage and application. And so we want to take the first steps today so in the future we are running with it. And this is just a small, uh, just a small tour of our facility in the Netherlands. Um, this is in Arnhem, the Netherlands, so a couple hours outside of Amsterdam. Uh, so it's on a clean tech campus, but this is our Tiremer Europe production facility. Uh, we call this kind of our facility 2.0. Um, this really is a, it's really a showcase facility. It's not a true manufacturing facility. This is really a place where we want to bring people, show the technology off, get people comfortable, and provide material as much as we can. But really, it's a, it's a showcase facility. Um, we, do have the, uh, we do have two ISO certifications. Um, we have a full straining capability, which is basically forcing the hot rubber through a fine mesh screen to remove any contaminants. Um, we have metal detection as well. Um, full QA, QC lab. We actually have two extruders here. Um, so we have our main extruder, the 90, is for our standard tire material. We have a smaller extruder, the 60 millimeter, um, which is good for synthetics, um, specifically things like EPDM. Again, we have this full straining capability. This is really important. I don't, I don't want to brush past this point. This is really important for quality in the tire industry. So basically, as you go through the crumbing process or as you get the retread buffing dust, there will be a little bit of contamination, whether it be some metal or wood or stones. There's going to be something in it. So basically, we force the hot rubber through a very fine mesh screen to remove any of those contaminations. This is a really important point for uh, breaking into the mainstream tire industry and tier one manufacturers. So while we are doing this in all our operations now, we believe that um, you know, basically any recycled rubber going forward is going to need to have some kind of straining mechanism or some kind of quality standard um, such as this straining. So we have product automatic cooling, drying, and cutting. So basically we'll go through a metal detector. Um, it'll weigh out exactly a 10 kilo sheet, plus or minus you know, a couple of percent, and then it'll automatically uh, stack the material. We check for metal, this is very important. So there's obviously there's metal checks at the beginning and magnets through the system, but this is one very final check before we stack the material. Um, we check it for metal one last time. Again, quality and, and tire industry go hand in hand. Um, and so this is something that we've had to spend a lot of time on um, in the last few years. Again, full QA and QC lab. So like any other, uh, product, if you order from us, it comes with a certificate of analysis. We can agree on whatever specifications we want to together, um, but we have the full lab to provide it as well. And so in conclusion here, really, you know, this concept of circular retreading, it's not just a concept. This is actually happening right now. We're doing this right now, and we feel like we can do this a lot more. Um, I think the support in Europe is... Um, is particularly good for this for these kind of activities. Um, retreading can really make a difference. We've seen that, and now this kind of takes it a step further by using the own retread waste um, to go back right into these retreads. And so again, you know, as a, as a licensor of technology, we uh, we would love to continue to discuss with partners. So if you know if you have a need for material, if you're interested to learn more, um, please come and talk to me. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Much appreciated. Has uh, anybody got any questions for John? Please. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Sure. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Good afternoon, John. Uh, what is the approximative amount of investment that's required to set up one of your factories? And what is the 